Give me one moment, please. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Willie Dixon. Hi, Willie. Hi, how <laughs> Thanks you for doing? being here. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. The first thing that I wanted to ask you is, when did the blues start? When did they begin? Well, the blues began a long time ago, and I think uh, history can prove it better than anyone else, by, because according to biblical history, Adam was blue and lonesome himself. Right. And. Uh, Adam being blue and lonesome, God made a woman because uh, to be his helpmate. And uh, I would say blues started with Adam because ever since Adam they have been blues. Oh, that's great. Uh, do you think that uh, as far as like in America, did it originate uh, in, the, in the fields, in the plantation, on the plantation? Oh well, yes, it started from work songs way back years ago and, and people uh, in, in working, doing different kinds of uh, whatever they was doing in those days, they had to make rhythms to the music to make the boys feel like they was uh, singing to keep the work going steady, but they was really delivering messages with the blues. And that's the same thing the blues are doing today. They're delivering messages of all kinds. Your, your father, uh, you had mentioned before that your father had sang a song to you when you were very young. Would you mind doing a little of that Oh, song? yes. Uh, my father yes. used to do this song, and he said that this particular song was made, one of the first songs that was made in the blues after the black people came to America. And he said this particular song was called Going Home. It was because most of the people was lonesome to go home. And any time a person get lonesome, naturally, they think about their best places, especially like home and like that. If you're a long ways from home, you're lonesome. And he'd sing this particular song, Going Home, Going Home. If I never see you no more, I'll meet you on another show. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, what, what started you getting involved in the blues? I mean, well, frankly, uh, all of my life I was involved in the blues because my mother she was a devoted Christian, and my father, he was a devoted sinner, I guess you would call it. <laughs> but anyway, he was devoted to singing the song that he thought was the true facts of life, and the true facts of life was the blues, because people that sung the blues was definitely thinking about the facts of life, and this is what the blues is all about, the facts of life. And as he sang these songs, a lot of times he would explain them to me. But my mother's idea was uh, after death, heaven, and the biblical side of the the biblical side of it. So I took the blues side because it seemed to be more realistic to me <laughs> and more interesting. Maybe <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what in particular was like a person who influenced you musically? Well, frankly, the one who influenced me mostly was his little brother Montgomery. He's a piano player. And because he was a small fellow and would be advertising the dance that they was going to play on the south side of Vicksburg, Mississippi, then I would stay out all day following the truck around. Uh, they used to have a flatbed truck or they would be on a flatbed wagon where they would have a piano up there and mules or horses would pull it in. And, I'd run along behind it all day long, and when I'd get home at night, my mother would give me a whipping because I'd chased the music all day long and hadn't done anything. Was the whipping worth it? I think it was. I think it's proven well worth Well, I like it anyway. <laughs> I heard stories about how you had sold some really incredible songs when you were younger for for small amounts of money, is that true? Oh yes, uh, when I was quite young, I was always interested in making songs because my father always told me so many different stories about music and songs and like this. And anytime I heard music, I was always making it there. And we used to live on a 
Street in Vicksburg, Mississippi called Ryan Street. And on Ryan Street, it was some fellas used to play uh, a country and western music, and they would be out there practicing at night. And I would go down where they was, and sometimes I'd sing my song, and sometimes I'd give them a song, and they'd put my name on a record or something like that. Show it to me, they'd give me a couple of dollars, or sometimes as much as ten dollars, and I thought that was big money at that Aww. time, you know. And they would use the song, put it on records and things, and that was good enough for me because I was loaded with songs, and I'm still loaded with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did it feel like when you finally got to the point where great artists like Presley and the Rolling Stones and the Doors and, you know, a lot of different people started doing your songs and, and really paying reverence to your music? Well, I'm very glad that they did because uh, the way that the blues was moving in those days, it didn't seem like the blues was going very far. And the people hadn't actually realized that the blues was the true facts of life, expressed in words and songs and inspiration and music. And, uh, but by these uh, doors and the stones and all these different people getting a hold of them and doing their thing, it caused the public to pay close to attention to them because the public had just about forgot about the blues. But the blues being the facts of life, they mean so much to so many people that don't realize it, you know. Can you clarify for me, uh, when you say the blues is the facts of life, you just mean like this is how it is? Or yes, this is definitely how it is because when people write the blues, they have an idea mostly. And this song that they are writing, they are writing because it's a part of them or a part of the life that someone else lived that they have experienced. And any other music, all other musics have, have definite things like the spiritual music is, uh, is, is uh, surrounded with biblical things and uh, heavenly things. And popular music is involved in mostly love affairs and, and moody things like this. But the blues cover them all. The blues call the name of God as much in the blues as you do in spiritual songs. And the blues are the true facts of life, whether it's good, bad, right or wrong, or anywhere in between. It expresses just what it means and just what it says. But most of the people have, haven't have paid very much attention to the blues. But once you learn the facts of life, you'll see that the blues are covering the facts of life regardless of what part of life. Great. Uh, the final question that uh, I guess they wanted to know was, what makes what made Chicago different? What, why were you know blues artists attracted to Chicago? Well, one of the reasons I think blues artists was attracted to Chicago is because at years ago in the South, people couldn't make very much money singing the blues, and they would play house parties and things. But in Chicago, there was a lot of Southern people had migrated there. And uh, they could get jobs playing house parties and this, these kind of things. And as they played these house parties and things, they could get a lot of recognition and they could make a living. And then in those days, they used to have these house parties would be just about every weekend. And a good blues player, guitar player, piano player, banjo player could always get a job, especially on a weekend, talking about and singing the blues. You see, but most, most of the time nowadays, don't very many people talk about the blues. And uh, I feel like it's really necessary that if people talk more about the blues and got the real explanation of them, they could understand the blues much better. That's great, and I think you've explained it really well for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, one other don't thing. Take. Now, do we... Uh, Nick's new job. You don't have to clip it. She wants to have sound. She's running down that. fast feet. Okay, we oh. it. Seven. Scene 30A, take one. Willie, would you please tell us a little bit about the first time that you met the Stones? Well, frankly, I didn't actually remember them as well as they remembered me. But, uh, 
I know when Memphis Slim and I was in Europe, we was playing in England, in Piccadilly Square, and we used to let a lot of kids in the back doors where we was so they could hear it because they, they wouldn't allow them to come in the front way. In fact, they wasn't supposed to be in the place, but we would open the back door so the kids could come and stand around and hear us sing and play. And some of these fellas gave me pictures of themselves and like that when they were young. Well, naturally, I couldn't remember them, but as they got, when they got grown and came to Chicago, they would say, uh, some of them would say, don't you remember me? How could I remember him? He was a naked-faced 10-year-old boy. <laughs> and next Nick time Jagger. I see him, he had hair all over his face and <laughs> hair all over his head and all like this. But occasionally I had pictures that they would see and say, oh, this is me here, and this is me here. And some of them was, they turned out to be some of everything. But while I was over there, in making these songs, the different ones, the kids would tell me they was going to do them, and I never believed them anyway. But I left a lot of songs on tapes with other people and would tell them to let the kids have them if they want them, you know. So showing up a few years later, here they came. Right. They Some were. of them were stones. I can remember Long John Baldwin because he was, seemed to have been taller than all the rest of the kids <laughs> all the time. But that's about the one that I remember the most. But we gave many kids songs over there and like that. That's and they... They liked the blues songs, but seemingly because it was different from what they had been hearing. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking here. What he's working on today. Okay, right, sorry. So, Willie, you've been writing songs ever since you were about how old? <laughs> oh, ever since I could remember, because I love poet. You're a poet. Well, what about today? I'm sure you haven't stopped. What, what have you been writing lately? Oh, I write songs all the time. Those that I'm not writing with a pencil, I have them in my mind about various things and the facts of life. And there are so many things that's so wonderful and so nice about uh, life itself that can be wrote about that would put people's mind to thinking. Well, and as sing. you think about various songs and the different things that's happening in the world today, uh, it really brings a lot of enlightenment to you. Please enlighten but, us right now. I would love you to just, if you don't mind. Well, one of bit. the songs that I, I, I wrote, I wrote this song some time ago, but this particular song, I feel, had a lot of uh, impact in it because it's a song called Good Advice, and everybody in the world needs good advice, and everybody in the world, all countries, all nationalities, and all people have some kind of advice that they always deliver to themselves or to other people or their surroundings. And I noticed that this particular song, I've gathered various cliches from various places around the world and made this song. And a lot of times they're using the same cliche, but they'll probably t take a different animal or something and make it different. But this particular tune is called Good Advice. And this good advice means just what it say, and I think that's why I put it good advice, good advice. Keep on going when you're sure you're right. But it would kick off some like Da, da. Good advice, good advice. Everybody know this is good advice. Good advice, good advice. You keep on the going when you're sure you're right. You know you're straining out a net, but you swallow a camel. Da -da 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 you know a wise man bet, but a fool he gambled. <laughs> you know a barking dog, well he seldom bite. And what's done in the dark has got to come to the light. 
You know you can't tell a farmer from a lover. You can't judge a book just looking at the cover. Now, good advice, good advice. You keep on the going when you show you're right. You know you fight the fire, it only fans the flame. Boop, up, boop, up, to do, to do. You know time is gonna change about everything. Do, do, da, do, da, do, 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 do. I like an eye for eye, tooth for tooth. <laughs> do, 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 do. You know the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. And if a man don't work, he's bound to steal. The grass look greener in the other field. Now that's good advice, good advice. You keep on the going when you show your right. You can't get blood from a turnip or glitter and gold. Dum, 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 dum. Why you can play good music when you play with soul. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause everything that start has got to have an end. Boom, 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 boom. And if you keep on the bet, then you're bound to win. You know, still tongue will make a wise hit. These are the things that wise folks said. Now, good advice, good advice. You keep on the going when you show you're right. You just keep on the going when you show you're right. You just keep on the going when you show you're right. And that's good advice. It sure is. Thank you for your advice, Willie. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. It's great. Wonderful. Thanks, now we need a specific uh, yeah, yeah, sweet. <laughs> Zine, seven bravo. Hold it, Willie. Just wait one second. Okay, Willie, it's all yours. So you want to know what are the blues? The blues are the true facts of life that's expressed in words and songs and music, inspiration and feeling. These are the true facts of life, the blues are. And the the reason that I feel the blues are so important in the world today because the blues have much wisdom that the world have never known. And the world doesn't um, seem to have time to get the wisdom that the blues have in it. And I'm sure it's just a matter of time when the world wake up to the blues as they are, the world will be a much better place to live in a lot of respects because the blues are the truth, and the blues are the facts of life, and the blues are the roots of all American music. That's great. That's good. Thank you.